India wages economic war against China's Belt and Road. India, historically a country that has strained relations with China, recently waged an economic war against China's Belt and Road Initiative or BRI. A large infrastructure project initiated in 2013 and officially launched in 2017. The BRI seeks to solidify China's influence over South Asia and large sections of the globe. India is determined to curb Chinese influence in the South Asia region by increasing funding to neighboring countries like Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. But the question remains, does India have the economic might to take on China and accomplish its goal of isolating the BRI? Hi, you've reached Finance Sense, the place where we discuss all the most recent trends in the financial markets and the economy. This video explores India's response to China's Belt and Road Initiative, as well as what its chances of success are. But before we get started, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit the bell notification button, and subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date with our new videos. Having said that, let's get started. There is now an ongoing project to construct a bridge in the Maldives that will stretch 7 kilometers and connect Male, the capital, to the islands to the west. The construction of it will require more than half a billion dollars and will be paid for by India. In contrast, the recently completed China-Maldives Friendship Bridge, which spanned 2 kilometers and was financed by China, can be found on the other side of the capital. In reality, it appears to be a continuation of a pattern in which India is essentially attempting to remove Chinese money from South Asia by offering its own money as a substitute. For instance, India offered almost $4 billion in loans to Sri Lanka whereas China only provided $1.2 billion, despite the fact that Chinese loans are well known for helping to develop massive projects all around Sri Lanka when its economy collapsed last year. Moreover, Bangladesh's finance minister recently issued a warning to other countries about borrowing excessively from China, even though Bangladesh was one of the primary beneficiaries of Chinese funding just a few years ago to construct new train lines and bridges. And now, India is providing funds for these most recent rail infrastructure projects between Bangladesh and India as part of the $8 billion finance package that it will provide. So what's the status? What strategies does India have to ensure that Chinese money leaves South Asia? And does it stand a chance of becoming successful? To get to these answers, we need to consider the original question. Why did India create this plan? To rephrase, why does China's financial presence in South Asia concern India? This, of course, is related to the long-standing political competition between these two powerful Asian nations. One important factor is that India has been seriously threatened by China's fast economic development. At the beginning of the 1990s, both economies were around the same size. Since then, China has surpassed India to claim the lead as Asia's largest economy. This made it possible for it to go on a major lending binge under the Belt and Road Initiative. China has been making loans worth tens of billions of dollars to a variety of different countries under this brand name. Many of India's immediate neighbors fall within this category, including Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, the Maldives, Nepal, and India's nemesis, Pakistan. Meanwhile, Professor Andreas Fuchs, who directs the China Initiative at the Kiel Institute, believes that China's motivations for offering these funds to recipient nations might be characterized as both self-serving and altruistic. Firstly, it uses the funds as an instrument of foreign policy to entice other countries to support it internationally. Next, it utilizes them to boost commercial relations with China. And finally, considering that it provides more to poorer nations, it appears that it is also relatively selflessly driven to work toward reducing world poverty. And despite being less transparent about its lending practices, China's motivations are not all that dissimilar to those of Western governments, which have traditionally inhabited this region. On the other hand, given the history of ferocious competition between the two nations, Chinese money possess a particular threat to India. The most significant contributor to the problem is the border that separates the two countries which is often referred to as the world's longest disputed border. 
And although the fighting appeared to have subsided following a border battle in 1962, recent deadly encounters between both troops have reignited. In light of this, India considered it to be highly threatening when large amounts of Chinese money began to pour into its neighbors. Nations receiving Chinese funding abruptly refrained from criticizing China on the global stage. In addition to this, some of these nations started rising to the top of a number of possible locations for future Chinese military facilities. However, China's economy has just begun to slow down, which is fortunate for India, and India is now seen as an emerging superpower in the area. The nation will quickly surpass China to become the most populated state in all of Asia. Despite being far poorer, the IMF projects that India's economy will develop considerably more quickly than China's in the following years. And as a result, India has the resources necessary to execute the strategy to expel Chinese money from South Asia. This proposal might not have an enticing name like China's Belt and Road Initiative, but it contains lots of money. Since 2014, India has increased its financing from $55 billion to $107 billion in terms of total development. While the Indian government attempts to downplay the fact that this is a response to the Belt and Road Initiative, analysts have revealed that if the Chinese government had contributed funding in the previous year, India's state-owned bank was substantially more likely to fund projects in the nation. Moreover, this trend was considerably more prevalent in regions where China had gained public support relative to India. Additionally, compared to China's Belt and Road Initiative, which totaled around $833 billion, Indian funding isn't all that substantial. China's Belt and Road funding, however, is dispersed across a far wider area. As a result, current Indian money already has a more significant impact than recent Chinese money for South Asian nations like Sri Lanka. And this already has political benefits for India. In addition to recently announcing various new goods that would enhance trade with India, Sri Lanka's public sentiment has also begun to move considerably in India's favor and against China. However, Sri Lanka still has a significant stake in maintaining good relations with China due to the massive amount of outstanding loans it has from China. Additionally, during previous crises, China has continued to provide India's struggling South Asian neighbors with emergency loans. So what are the chances of success for India's strategy? India's inability to entirely force Chinese capital out of South Asia is actually quite improbable. To begin, India's economy is far smaller than China's. And even if it grows faster than expected, it will take a long time to catch up. Second, because India has a substantial trade imbalance, the country needs to secure funds from abroad in order to pay for its imports. This, however, does not negate the fact that India may still be a significant source of funding for other nations. Thank you for watching this far. Please leave a like, subscribe to help us expand our future audience, and comment down your thoughts in the comment section. This is Finance Sense, helping you keep up with all the latest trends in the financial markets and the economy. Stay safe and look out for the next video.